All right, let's get to it. The editing settings uh, control some of the defaults that are going to be associated with your edit page controls and keyboard shortcuts. For example, you can generate solid shapes and color bars inside of the edit page. And here you can specify how long those are going to be in seconds and frames. You can do the same thing for the default transition duration, the default still duration if you're importing still images. You can have a pre-roll time associated with clips and post-roll time. What might also be practical for you is deciding in advance how long the handles are going to be. The handles are the bits of footage on either side of a trim that will be included in a consolidated export that you send to an audio engineer or a visual effects editor. At the bottom, we're able to decide the quality of our frame interpolation when we're changing the speed of our clips. We'll be covering these options in more detail when looking at read time controls in the edit page. Keep in mind for now that these are listed in order of quality and the required processing power, with nearest being the lightest process. At this stage, let's keep the default settings as they are. The color preset dictates the behaviors on the color page. At the top, we're able to specify if we want to use a local version for any new clips that we add to a timeline. Switching this off means that every new clip will be remote. There will be a separate tutorial on local versus remote versions, and I suggest you stick to the default settings until you find out which one you prefer to work with. Secondly, this used to be a default inside of DaVinci Resolve until the last couple of versions. This is to automatically match your master timeline with all of the clips that are currently in the media pool. Master timelines will be covered in later tutorials, uh, in which case you'll also be able to make this decision. Automatically queuing a certain amount of frames into your timeline clips can be really convenient when you want to jump between clips, but you don't want to see the first frame of each cut. Maybe your shot begins on something that's very dark or very overexposed. In that case, you can choose something like 10, and that means that when I start jumping between my clips in the timeline, I will actually be seeing the 10th frame show up on my viewer. So when I'm grading, this will act as a better reference. The ripple mode refers to how clips will all be affected when you make certain changes in DaVinci Resolve, but this particular preset only applies to workstations with a DaVinci control surface. With the Dynamics Profile setting, you're able to adjust the acceleration of your interpolation. Uh, we're going to be looking at dynamic keyframes in a short while, and you'll be able to see how this could be useful. It means that you can come up with a specific look to the speed of your animation of certain values and keep it constant throughout your project. The general settings are not too general, they're actually really quite specific. Uh, the luminance mixer, for example, defaulting to zero, is an option that you can enable only if you're using footage that's ASC CDL compliant. The master reset maintaining RGB balance means that when you're resetting your primary color correction to default values, it will not actually nullify all of your settings, but will actually maintain the same relationship between the colors in the YRGB space. If you're not sure what either of these are about, it probably means that you don't need to touch them. With a color picker, you can choose which version of the picker to use. I'd recommend staying with the default DaVinci Resolve unless you have a workflow that has previously utilized 2K. And lastly, you have a very simple setting for which node will be highlighted when you click on a clip and look into your node tree. If you're working in a film lab with the intention of printing your footage to tape, you might want to collaborate with the lab technician to decide on which of these color settings are best suited for your project. In the camera raw settings, we can select the camera that we're shooting on and change its settings to manipulate the metadata of the footage. The settings change based on your chosen video format, but we'll be covering these basics when looking at the camera raw palette on the color page in a later tutorial. The color management page controls your LUT settings and your broadcast safe controls. These settings will depend on the color signs that you have selected in the master project settings, so whether it's YRGB or ACES. You can specify your default LUTs for your 1D and 3D input and outputs, and also select your default LUTs for video monitoring. Later on, you'll also be able to generate a LUT from your current timeline-based grade. And lastly, you'll be able to select the color space in which you'll be previewing your timeline. In the next video, we're going to be looking at versions, audio, and general options. Thank you for watching.